The exciting thing is that we've shown that plants can predict when they're most likely to get infected, what time of day they're most likely to get infected at, um, and can respond uh, to try and combat that, that likelihood of infection. So we've discovered one way in which they try to combat this, um, and this is what we now want to use to, to try and improve disease resistance in crops. A biological mechanism which uh, allows the plant to have a perception of time. Um, plants like animals um, have uh, clocks which are, they, they have biological timekeepers which are present in every single cell, which are normally synchronized to the environmental day night cycles, but which are capable of um, keeping time even in the absence of these singles uh, for, for days and weeks on end. What we did not know until very recently is that this uh, biological clock, which we call the circadian clock, um, is also important to control plants' immunity to fungal pathogens. Well, the first sign that there might be came from experiments we did where we saw that the disease symptom severity varied upon the time at which the plant encountered the pathogen. So here at UCT we showed that plants are more susceptible to bacterial pathogens when we infect, when we infect them during the night and less so when they're infected during the day. Now together with our colleagues at Warwick we've shown that this also applies to fungal pathogens like Tritus cinerea. So when we infect the plants with fungal spores in the morning, the lesions that develop on the leaves are smaller than when we repeat those experiments at night. Okay, so why do we think the clock is involved? Well, there's two main lines of evidence. Firstly, we get the same results in our experiments when we carry out the infections under constant light conditions. And this is important because the clock will still run under these conditions, but we can exclude the effect of any um, sort of light signaling in there. Secondly, we've seen that when we analyze clock mutants that lack key components of the clock mechanism, we no longer see that temporal variation in immunity. So together, these data suggest that the clock is modulating the immune response, and the consequence of that is that the immune response is stronger at some times of the day than at others. Well, it's easy to appreciate that changes in the environment, such as light and temperature, can be, can be anticipated and plants can predict them. But can they actually predict pathogen attack? Well, when we consider that some fungi, including Botrytis cinerea, have their own circadian clock that it controls, amongst other things, spore formation and dispersal, then we can see that pathogen attack does become more predictable just because of the abundance of the infectious agent. There's also changes in the, the daily cycle, such as in humidity and wind and temperature, that promotes spore survival or dispersal, and these have a daily periodicity. So that would make infection more favorable at particular times of day. So plants being able to anticipate infection by a pathogen looks like it could be an adaptation that allows for optimum resource allocation and prime, priming of the defences. So after we've seen that plants are responding faster at dawn compared to dusk, we then wanted to look at the specific aspects of what was responding faster. And what we've seen was that it was the jasmonic acid signaling pathway. There were certain genes in there that were getting upregulated and activated much more at dawn compared to dusk. And we thought this was quite interesting. It's just one specific hormonal pathway. And jasmonic acid is really important in defence against fungal pathogens. So we thought we'd pursue this. And we collaborated with Marie Grant in Exeter. And we got a lot of jasmonic acid signaling mutants and screen these for diurnal differences in susceptibility to botrytis. So infected these mutants at dawn and at dusk. And we've seen that there were specific mutants um, that lost this dawn-dusk difference in susceptibility. And these mutants generally contain JAS6. We've discovered this, this what, protein, JAS6, uh, which is able to link between the clock and the plant immune response. So what we're doing now is working on how does JAS6 do this? Um, whatever it's doing is quite effective. This one protein is, is altering defence response between dawn and night. So if we can work out what JAS6 is doing, what other things in the cell is it interacting with, what other um, proteins is it, is it affecting? So if we can work out what it's doing, um, we know that those are the important parts of the plant immune response. 
And by identifying the important parts of the plant and immune response, that gives us some targets uh, to develop crops which, um, and to breed crops which have enhanced disease resistance. We can look at these targets in crops and try to improve um, how the, the crop plants can be protected against pathogens.